ladies and gentlemen. My name is Minglan Tsai. I'm from Taipei Medical University Hospital, Taipei, Taiwan. Today, my topic is age-dependent EEG change in children. My outline is first one is neonatal and infant EEG maturation and age-dependent change, and the EEG change in infants and children. And the third topic will be mentioned about the pitfall of the EEG in normal children. Today, the first topic is normal development of the EEG in neonatal period. We just have a mini review about the developmental change. First of all, we will th- we will uh, take a look of the neonatal basic neuroscience, and anatomically, the brain is from no intermes- interhemispheric connection to cortical cortical connection about 30 weeks of gestational age. At this time, the synchrony start to develop. So as you can see here, the sylvan fissure is most prominent when they start to develop a brain. And then uh, followed by calcarine suture, calcarine fissure, and the parietal occipital sulcus. And about the 30 weeks start to have a cortical cortical connection. When we do the sonography in our uh, practice, usually a very young premature infant, the cortex is quite flat. Until 34 gestation of age, 34 weeks of gestational age, we'll start have the corpus callosal connection. And the ongoing EEG oscillation is also functioning through thalamus and the cortex fiber and developed into thalamocortical loops and finally connection to the specific cortical layer. This is the near term. And at this time, the delta branches is a very prominent EEG waveform in the premature is developed when they were uh, about 21 to 24 weeks of gestational age. And they will gradually decrease the amplitude while the brain get mature. And appearance within a very premature infant and decrease the voltage grading and then start to di- disappear at about uh, 36 to, to 40 weeks of gestational age. So our uh, EEG in newborn will have three types of recording. One is routine EEG, and the second is continual EEG. It's usually about 24 hours. And those EEG are done by EEG technologists and have a raw EEG data with uh, with electro with 12 to 19 electrodes. And the AEG usually have uh, hours, days recording, and the electro usually only uh, two to four. And the electro application usually done by nurse and interpreted by neonatologist. And the display usually have per screen have three hours of EEG and interpretation will be done by neonatologist or nurse is basically a, a monitor tool and the CEG and the routine EEG we use as a diagnostic tool and the CEG also used as a monitor tool and the, in the neonate the behavioral state that we needed to understand that it is electroclinical characteristics. First, the waking state. 
and the second is active sleep or so-called rapid eye movement sleep state and the third is quiet sleep that means non-rapid eye movement sleep and the intermediate sleep or transitional sleep we can see in the near-term newborn baby so it's very simple table can we we can understand what is the behavior of the active sleep the eyes usually close we say it was sleeping uh, she or he is sleeping and the body move was present in active sleep and the eye movement also present present and uh, respiratory frequency or re respiration eerie or always irregular in active sleep and the chin EEG is low for the quiet sleep behavior I also close but there were there was no body movement or nor uh, eye movement the respiration is regular and the chin EEG usually high tone and the intermediate sleep also closed and the sleep different from active and quiet sleep we call it intermediate sleep and awake usually eye open but the body and eye movement is present and the uh, respiration is irregular so as you can see here the sleep onset is usually have active sleep for the first stage and then some some uh, baby have intermediate sleep and then followed by into uh, quiet sleep and the trace alternates usually uh, present at newborn baby a uh, full-term newborn baby and then go to uh, active sleep stage two we call it the uh, uh, REM sleep and then gradually awake and intermediate sleep so this is like a circle a cycle so usually full term sleep cycle is average sleep cycle is around 50 to 60 minutes so that's why we needed to do the EEG for a newborn baby at least one hour just for recording the old sleep state and this is also a, a cartoon about the full term EEG from the premature to full-term EEG as you can see here the premature before 28 usually there is no not very differentiated state of the REM or non-REM sleep usually discontinued EEG pattern after 28 weeks of gestation it will we can recognize uh, the active sleep and quiet sleep and some some of them have intermediate sleep we can uh, judge from the interburst interval if it's very long and that means this baby is quite premature it's the gestational this conceptional age is very uh, low and uh, if the active sleep still discontinue at this time usually also uh, the gestational age is low so uh, the trend of the appearance of neonatal EEG usually paralleled with brain development according to their continuity the synchrony and the waveforms change when they get m mature and uh, we can also judge the wake and sleep cycle is more and more clear so the step of interpretation of neonatal EEG usually we will recognize or interpret development milestone if they are consistent between state sleep waking state and gestation or conceptional age we call it this, this if this is not uh, corresponding or not correlate with their conceptional age we call it this this chronism or dismaturation 
And the second, we will identify the specific EEG abnormality, such as abnormal background pattern, like focal slowing or focal abnormality, or voltage asymmetry. And then we needed to, the third step will be a correlation EEG findings with clinical history. The characteristics of the normal neonatal EEG is uh, first is a tendency to continuity, continuity of recording, both awake and eventually during sleep. The second is specific wave pattern we will explain later and gradually developed and gradually disappeared. For example, delta brushes or beta delta complexes, occipital slow wave activity, temporal theta burst, usually occur in a more premature, like uh, 20, 20, 20, uh, 26 to 28 weeks of conceptional age, and frontal sharp transient usually occurred in near term baby. A tendency to the development of synchrony is also we just mentioned about like 30 weeks of conception age you can see a synchrony of EEG activity between hemispheres it's just because the brain developed a tendency to the establish of clearly defined wake sleep cycle so the synchrony uh, is developed about uh, 30, uh, 20, 29 to 30 weeks of conceptional age. Like this one is a, uh, it's still not very uh, synchrony, although it appeared here. This is a sleep, quiet sleep state, but not here. This is, as you can see, left here and right here, not very uh, synchronized. Synchronize. And this is also not very synchronized like uh, excessive interhemisphere or synchrony. This is the left side and this is the right side, not very synchronous of the EEG activity. So, so as this, uh, this figure show us that uh, in the 25 weeks of conceptional age, it's still very discontinued EEG, like a period of uh, EEG waveform, high voltage, slow wave, and the period of a very flat, like discontinue the EEG background, and very prolonged discontinue even during active sleep state, and uh, there is no sleep state differentiation at this time, and the amplitude usually very high in the premature baby, like 25 weeks of conceptional age, and when they when they reach the 28, the voltage gradually diminished. And the interburst interval, this is called the interburst interval, is gradually shortened. And uh, the duration of the burst or so called uh, high voltage slow wave period is getting longer. In the 40 weeks of uh, conceptional age, it appeared in the background to like a mixed voltage uh, theta and delta activity. And the voltage, so called amplitude, at this time is uh, lower than premature baby as you can see this e AEEG amplitude EEG and this is the, our case which is a premature baby of 31 weeks of conceptional age as you can see here she still have a discontinued sleep pattern during quiet sleep the amplitude is higher and less synchrony, like this is the right side and this is the left side. Uh, some of them are some uh, synchronous pattern, but most of them are asynchronous. Like active sleep, this is show the less synchrony, and uh, uh, even during the active sleep, still show the discontinued pattern. And when this is the 35 weeks of conceptional age premature baby, as you can see here, there are more continuous patterns here in the active sleep, almost all very continuous. But the quiet sleep, you can see the trace discontinue. Uh, 
not reach the transe alternate, but the, the interburst interval is more flatter. It's flatter than the uh, newborn, uh, like a transe alternate. So we call it transe discontinuum. But we can see here the higher synchrony pattern in the in this uh, 35 weeks of conception, no premature baby. And this we can see also very clear that this is uh, 31 weeks of conceptional age, and uh, this is the uh, 35 weeks as you, we can we uh, show you last uh, EEG, and this is the 40 weeks of uh, sep conceptional age is uh, full term baby is more continued during the uh, quiet sleep. I think as you can see the AEEG here is high voltage and this is greater voltage greater decrease and you, until the uh, uh, full term newborn is more uh, low voltage compared to the 35 weeks of conceptional age. And this is the figure also show the examples of polygraphic recording in the quiet sleep when they increase the age of a gestational age, conceptional age. At the 25 to 28, you can see this is a continual, discontinual pattern of the EEG, very discontinual. The interburst interval is very long. At 25, 22 to 25 weeks, it shows a tracé discontinual gradually developed. And the 28 to 20, uh, 40, can show the tracé discontinu tracé alternance. And this is the table I like to, uh, every time when I read the EG, I like to refer and this this table. And when we read at 26 to 28 EG, usually the, even though the quiet sleep or active sleep is not very easy to differentiate it, and also shows uh, discontinued pattern in this time. And the uh, synchrony is hypersynchrony, sometimes hypersynchronous at this time. But when they reach the 20, 29 weeks of conception age, the synchrony is not well until over 20, uh, 20, uh, 30 weeks of conceptional age will gradually increase the synchrony. And the 20, around the 22 weeks of conceptional age, active sleep stage start have continuity, but quiet sleep still have uh, still discontinued pattern. And uh, the the waveform, like I mentioned here, uh, about the 30, uh, 29 to 30 weeks of conceptional age, the temporal theta burst still uh, present at this time, four to eight. 4 to 6 hertz, but the delta brush is gradually developed and uh, uh, over the central area in a very young uh, premature baby, like before 30 weeks of conceptional age, but become more, move more posterior to occipital to temporal regions in the conceptional age of 22 weeks. And the delta brushes keep keep present and uh, very abundant during 22 to 26 of conceptional age of delta brushes. And temporal theta bursts gradually become uh, temporal alpha bursts. And as you can see here, the 26 weeks of gestational age, uh, it appeared the more continual pattern in awake and active sleep, but still have discontinued pattern, quiet sleep. Quiet sleep. And, uh, and when they reach the four terms, all more, all the stage is become continuous pattern and the synchrony is gradually increased. And the occipital delta brush will, will decrease and disappear by 39 weeks of gestational age. So the specific EEG waveform in premature and uh, uh, neonates, we can have a review 
I, I mentioned many times about the beta delta complex delta brushes. This kind of uh, specific waveform of uh, 0.5 to 1 hertz and the voltage is very high around 250 to 500 microvolts which superimposed with uh, beta activity with a frequency of 8 to 22 hertz and relative to the smaller amplitude uh, of this uh, beta activity about 20 to 150 microvolts so it present uh, most abundantly in uh, 28 to 35 weeks of conceptional age and the temporal theta burst at the beginning is theta and later become alpha and midline frontal and central rhythmic theta alpha burst is appeared over, uh, during 31 to 33 weeks of gestational age and the occipital theta activity is uh, appeared usually or, uh, on the 29 to 30 weeks of conceptional age. So the bifrontal rhythmic theta activity is appeared 29 to 35 weeks and the frontal sharp transcend usually appear the 34 to 44 weeks of conception age. The trussy attenance is uh, from 38 to 44 weeks of conceptional age. So this is still the brushes in a very young age like uh, 20 9 to 30, the, the beta component is high voltage and uh, the frequency is lower. And the, and the temporal theta burst usually appeared in uh, 30 to 32 weeks of conceptional age. And uh, the anterior slow of dysrhythmia is around 35 weeks of conceptional age. And the frontal sharp transcend usually appeared at 36 of conception age. Frontal sharp transcend is very, uh, also a very interesting uh, normal sharp transcend in premature, and uh, it developed gradually, uh, gradually uh, become like uh, biphasic. At first, prob sometimes it's down going positive and uh, gradually it become biphasic and uh, it did become like this kind of uh, a sharp wave over frontal area in over 35 conception 35 weeks of conceptional age and dr otsupo also uh, did a, a research on the rapid oscillation of premature baby around 33 to 35 weeks of gestational age. The oscillation frequency uh, is around 16.9. So it's wide range of the, the beta delta uh, oscillation. Delta brush is, is, around, uh, is around 5 to 30 hertz. So when you read a full-term newborn baby, uh, the first we needed to know which sleep state or awake or quiet sleep or active sleep. We have uh, mentioned this, but the EEG pattern in the awake in the uh, full-term newborn is quite, uh, quite, uh, quite. We need to know very well. The awake. When, when they were awake, usually LVI pattern, that means low voltage, irregular, slow wave. We call it active way moyan. One can see as this one is very low voltage, irregular, slow wave. And this is a tracé alternance of the newborn baby when they were quite asleep. This is quite common, high voltage, low voltage, a few uh, seconds, three to five seconds, then high voltage and sometimes have some uh, sharp activity here but it, this is the tracé alternance and when, you, when we see the uh, tracé alternance usually they were uh, quite asleep and, but uh, still we can see sometimes high voltage slow wave and uh, active sleep usually present with LVI pattern and awake uh, LVI pa pattern or mixed pattern. 
And how do we differentiate this is trace alternates and the disc or discontinue or burst suppression? There are some uh, guidelines we can follow. The trace alternates, usually the interburst interval voltage is over 25 microvolts, which is the newborn, full term newborn baby trace and is normal. But if like a more premature baby, we call it a trace, this continue usually happen in uh, 35 to 36 of conception, weeks of conceptional age. And the interburst interval, usually the uh, very low voltage could be 0 to, point, uh, to 25 microvolts. As you can see here, in this is the full term, the interburst interval is higher in voltage compared to the 35 or weeks of conceptional age. But if this case is a birth suppression, which is abnormal, it's appeared in, uh, for example, uh, hypoxia ischemic encephalopathy newborn, and the IBI voltage is even lower than the Trasset is continued very flat between 0 to 5 microvolts. The low voltage is very suppressed and uh, the interburst interval is very, uh, the voltage of interburst interval very low. And uh, the uh, EEG of uh, uh, hypoxia ischemic encephalopathy sometimes is uh, severe abnormal presented with low very low voltage suppressed background is about two to five microvolts and the ECI pattern is zero to two uh, microvolts so this is the example of the trace alternance and trace discontinue so this is the uh, developmental change of the specific pattern during sleep. The first one is temporal theta and and the second one is uh, delta brushes delta beta delta complex and then temporal theta alpha burst and frontal sharp transcend which we need to know and translate out lens. So this is the figure uh, give us an impression of like temporal theta burst usually appeared in the 29 weeks of 26 weeks of conceptional age and delta brushes appeared in the 24 25 and then the peak will be 31 32 and gradually uh, disappeared before 40 weeks of gestational age and the, and this is synchrony gradually develop over 30 weeks of conceptional age. So the continuity of interburst interval gradually, uh, the interburst interval will gradually decrease according to they become more mature. As you can see here, this is the, uh, the example or the reference for you, like interburst interval in 26 of conceptional age can, can up the upper limit will be six, uh, 46 seconds. Compared to uh, 37 to 40 weeks, the interburst interval, the upper limit will be 6 seconds. So this is uh, for you, uh, for your reference. But you need to uh, very uh, caution about the sedative medication such as morphine. For example, uh, the cooling baby. When they do hypothermic therapy, they sometimes will use morphine. So the interburst interval will be longer than the natural sleep baby. So this is a, a very uh, famous figure that many lecturers will use as a template. And the, the EEG pattern of the full-term baby, uh, sometimes we, we, we will have five patterns. The normal pattern, what we will say, is continuous normal voltage, and the discontinuous normal voltage could be a normal tracing too, especially presented in the premature baby. And the birth suppression is abnormal, as moderate abnormal. Interburst the interval, uh, the interburst the intervals uh, voltage will be uh, five to ten, uh, less than five and the upper margin will more than 10 
and but if you read the EEG in continuous uh, normal voltage pattern, you will see the the lower margin usually over five, and the upper margin usually over ten microvolts. And if this is discontinuous normal normal voltage, the lower margin also over five, then upper margin also more than 10. So the lower margin and the upper margin can give us a reference of the reading uh, AEEG. But the birth suppression pattern, the lower margin usually not over five, but under five, but less than five. So this can be a uh, uh, give us a differentiation of the discontinued pattern or birth suppression pattern of the EEG. And if this is the low, very low voltage EEG pattern, we call it severe abnormal, very flat. And the AEG usually show uh, the, the average voltage will be below 5 or close to 5. And if close to 2, and with this will be ECI pattern. So we can use the AEG as a reference of in of our uh, uh, degree of severity of the EEG background. So our mini summary of the maturation of neonatal EEG is continuity, synchrony, waveform, wake sleep cycles are key features to understand the neonatal EEG and maturation. The background activity is important in interpretation of the neonatal EEG, AEEG, and the CSD can help us identify the background, like I say. Like I said 5 microvolts and 10 microvolts could be a guideline for us to interpretate. Mm -hmm.